Hello everybody, welcome into the latest video. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of my Golden Demon stuff. Um, we are, are we seven weeks out now? Uh, March, April, yeah, so we're seven, seven weeks away. Um, I'm pretty close with with all of my entries really. Um, so I just thought a few of the, a few of you have been asking for like thoughts and uh, like current um, current state and and where I want to go with them. So I thought I would start with my favourite one at the moment, which is uh, Glorfindel. Um, if you have been following me for uh, any length of time, then you'll know that I did a mounted Glorfindel last year for Golden Demon. So that um, that <laughs> that actually interrupted. <laughs> it interrupted my uh, my actual entry from from last last year. My, I was going to enter um, a Necromunda uh, unit. Uh, it was led by Lady Credo uh, with a heavy flamer conversion that I did, and uh, a lady with a whip, um, and a sniper rifle, and then a little fire cat. But then Games Workshop, as they do. Um, <laughs> just dropped they dropped uh, Glorfindel um, four weeks I think it was four weeks maybe it was five weeks it was four or five weeks before Golden Demon anyway I was like I have to paint that it's absolutely gorgeous and stupidly I decided to paint the mounted version uh, I haven't got the mounted version here to show you uh, I would love to but um, it's uh, it's down in the cabinets at Warhammer World I will, I will grab that back and, uh, and bring it in if you head over to my um, Instagram social media on Instagram um, Instagram dot uh, com forward slash Chris Frosting. You can uh, find a picture on there, but this is the the infantry on foot version of Glorfindel, uh, which I've decided to do for uh, for this year's Golden Demon. Uh, as you can see, I've kept the non-metallic armor of Gondolin as he's wearing the gold armor, and I've kept the. It's pretty much exactly the same color scheme uh, from talking to a couple of friends last year at Golden Demon. I have made the cloak a little bit more blue. Uh, obviously the back's not finished yet, but uh, I have made it a bit more saturated, just a bit more, just to have a bit more punch to it. So uh, I've I've done that. We've got lots of work done. Uh, we've got the uh, I, I did the face, uh, and yes, I have highlighted it. I think we can probably, if we zoom in, uh, hang on, let me get the focus first, and we can zoom in. If we zoom in, you can also see how how rough it is uh, because the there we go. So we have. We have got the both pupils in, and we have highlighted both pupils as well, uh, and it really just <laughs> really crazily shows up the brushwork. Uh, but this is actually quite an interesting and useful, useful um, way of breaking down and getting getting kind of really critical feedback of your own work when you're looking at it. Uh, so if you look here, I've got a little bit of work to do. This is crazy. That's my thumb. It's my uh, sorry, my fingernail. Got a little bit of work to do here on the. Let me get a pointer. So when you're looking at it, kind of this zoomed in. Uh, it's the same with photographs as well. So when you're taking photographs, you can, uh, uh, particularly camera photos, uh, camera photos, phone uh, photos, they really show up some of the because they they add self, uh, they add uh, post processing to the picture themselves. So it breaks out and really makes some of your. Uh, brush marks are very harsh so that you can see so you can see down here I'm a little bit I'm a little bit not I'm not particularly neat down there so this this lower area hasn't got very much opacity to the uh, to the paint finish um, and also I'm, I'm I'm arguably a little bit chalky up here but um, and, and definitely in, in here so at some point maybe I'll drop a glaze in there but this is so so hidden away and uh, it is very very zoomed in uh, as you can see, I've got the sash to finish off, um, so I haven't done I haven't done any any points of the sash. So we'll just zoom out. Don't need to see this zoomed in anymore. Uh, so yeah, I do need to finish both sides of the sash and then both sides of the skirt, uh, the underskirt here. And um, yeah, he's he's very very close to being finished. I should be able to finish this guy in a week. Uh, I've got to um, do the uh, the feet and a little bit of refining on some of the uh, some of the boots, uh, and then obviously the back. Um, so uh, yeah, I should be able to get this guy finished within a week, and then it's just the idea of the plinth. Now I was going to do a very simple plinth for this, um, but uh, again, talking to a friend, 
he's um, he's recommended uh, or just kind of nudged really is like well the one you did last year was really good <laughs> so maybe do something like that again so I, what the, the plan is this is the this is the mock-up one that I did for last year um, so this is pretty pretty similar to what it looked like last year uh, you'll remember if you re if you remember the model you'll recognize this it's this kind of cut out here and then Glorfindel was up on the top uh, this is just a mock-up that I did so the plan is I'm going to have him uh, it's, the, it's not going to be quite as quite as big a plinth. It's going to be quite a bit smaller, so maybe 45, 50 mil. Uh, no bigger than 50 mil at least, anyway. So he's going to be standing on the top of a plinth. The plinth is going to have a very, very gradual, very gradual um, uh, landscape uh, uh, on it. Uh, very, very gradual. Uh, uh, well, it's going to be a riverbank. So um, it's going to, he's going to be standing on the on the banks of the River Bruinen. So for those of you who have read the Lord of the Rings books, uh, it is Glorfindel actually who saves Frodo from the Ringwraiths. And on the banks of the Bruin, and that's when he uh, summons the white water to wash the uh, to, to wash the Ringwraiths away, the Black Riders away. So that's the plan. He's going to have a very, it's not going to be quite as tall either. So it's going to be quite, quite shallow um, and uh, a, a riverbank uh, fading down into the river with, uh, with some... Uh, some good uh, cobbles and stones and riverbank and stuff, uh, riverbed. And then I'm going to get, uh, because I have the Witch King here, so I've got the, uh, the the new Witch King model, but you'll notice that I've swapped the sword off for um, the flaming sword that you get in the, um, the Witch King with the Fell Beast. So I have his sword spare. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of break that uh, and as if it's as if it's been broken and put that in the in the riverbed as well just to kind of put a little bit of content context uh, into the river as well so that's this is my main um main entry this is the one i'm really really excited about um and i <laughs> to be honest i'm i i know the lord of the ring stuff gets uh, i don't know whether it gets a bad rep but it gets a lot of uh, there's like a big um seems to be a big <laughs> just that it's a really small model uh and like the the entry into it uh is is maybe sometimes quite daunting because everything's so small i mean look at the size of the eyes but actually i really enjoy painting this scale so for next year and i know we're talking about this year for next year uh i think i'm going to finish off thranduil um because he's uh he was i, <laughs> I was going to do thranduil for last year's golden demon and then completely got distracted so He's had he's had a little bit of work done to him, so I'm going to do uh, Thranduil for next year. But this is this is this year's. Very very excited. I've got the uh, the the back of the cloak to sort out. Uh, you can see the uh, the helmet already is getting brighter because if you look if you look here, we've got the the gold armor is quite dark uh, in the shadows here. We've got a nice hot spot here, and then it's getting very very bright up towards the top. So the uh, the wrist plate uh, uh, and the gauntlets up here are much much brighter and warmer than down here and then this is even colder still so it's quite warm on this side quite cold on this side so the helmet is going to be even brighter brighter gold uh, up the top so we keep the focal point up here and then the the sword i've got to do the sword nice and chrome uh, so that'd be quite nice but yeah it's prob probably probably a week's uh, probably a week's work left uh, and then the base um, and that's not even like a, a, a solid week's work i could probably finish them off in a couple of days uh, anyway so that's that's the the entry which I'm really excited about, um, Glorfindel. So he's going to go into Lord of the Rings single mini, and uh, fingers crossed. Um, this is the probably the one that I'm most excited about to see where it gets to. Uh, I think that's fair to say. Um, so uh, yeah, that's the plan. Uh, I won't make it quite so murky this time either. I'm going to keep it quite crisp and clear. Uh, that when I do the resin pour, this resin pour had a little bit of Athonian camo shade. I think it was. Yeah, Athonian camo shade. Uh, it's still <laughs> it's still on my desk uh, from the last time when I did the resin pour. So yeah, this had a little bit of Athonian camo shade in there. Just to it. it was trying to make it look like the marshes, um, but um, when I do it on this one, it's going to be nice and crisp and clear. So that is entry number one, uh, Glorfindel. There's an update on Glorfindel. And yeah, so actually one of the things I wanted to say. Uh, well, well, we'll we'll come back to that. We'll come back to what I wanted to say because it uh, refers to it, references everything else as well. Um, so this is 
the uh, the other main entry that I wanted to do. Uh, for those of you who hang out in my streams and uh, <laughs> pay any attention to me, <laughs> um, pay any attention to me on Twitter, I absolutely love my Tomb Kings, and Kalida is one of my favourite models. Uh, now I have Kalida here as well. Here is Kalida. Um, unfortunately, she's a, a, a quite a bad cast. Uh, and although she's one of my favourite sculpts, she's very, very difficult to paint at a really good standard. Um, so what I decided to do was another badass vampire undead lady, uh, which is Neferata. So this is a Neferata conversion based around the... Uh, it's based around the vampire that came out. It was one of the... I think it was a... Um, I think it was one of the Warhammer commemorative... Um, birthday, or maybe it was either a birthday, a store birthday model, or it was a uh, event exclusive. Anyway, it was the it was the vampire from there, and all I've done is I've put Neferata's head on and Neferata's uh, arms on, um, which uh, it goes really really well. I haven't put the back like bum plate uh, on her, uh, which I may live to regret because this join up here between the cloth isn't particularly good. Yes, I probably should have sculpted something there just to kind of smooth that out and. Uh, make it look less like it was just like stuck on the top of a bum or something. I don't know anyway uh, But yeah, this is so this is Neferata and uh, this is going to go into AOS unit um, the, <laughs> This is the, All these all the I'll show you the rest of them all these are taking an awful long time to do uh, because they've all got this very textured purple cape and cloak on them all Um and it's proving incredibly time-consuming to do, because um, purple, I like uh, purple is notoriously difficult to paint. Uh, for me, anyway, it's uh, you can have you can have your recipes and you can have everything like that. I wanted to do this one. Uh, obviously, I've got uh, the, the the focal points up here, so I'm trying to keep it bright up towards the top, up around her face. So it kind of ventures into pink, but you don't want it to go too pink because then when it goes too pink, then it starts looking too pink and it doesn't look purple anymore so it's it's one of the same same reasons with red as well so red uh the, it's, it's quite interesting looking at the two different reds on here so the, they actually use the same paints exactly the same paints with exactly the same final highlight it's just that there's more mid-tones in this in this uh, kind of the armor red than it is in the cloth red so the cloth red as you can see is a lot more is a lot darker um but i think it kind of ties together quite well doing it like that and then obviously the non-metallic. I'm a sucker, absolute sucker for a long sword. So all of these, these models are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, they took a little bit of filling in here, just with a little bit of green stuff and milliput. But I'm a sucker for a long sword. So all the, uh, all the, <laughs> all the swords have been swapped out for long swords. Uh, they're just from the Nighthaunt, um, Great Gas Reapers, I think, something like that. But yeah, so we got we, we're having. I'm trying to do brass and silver, so they've got silver armor, um, brass, uh, brass trim, and everything on on uh, on their weaponry, and then Kalida is in gold as well. So Kalida's got the gold gold trim. Uh, sorry, not Kalida, Neferata. <laughs> you can tell how much I like Kalida. Uh, <laughs> completely sidetracked, uh, but uh, the 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 Warhammer Old World Tomb Kings. Uh, were hinted at today and I'm kind of losing my mind as possibly a new kaleidoscope. Anyway, that is a completely separate video. So these are uh, to tie everything together in this unit. So I'm going I'm having the, this dark purple cloth uh, and it's all on the on the tatty on the tatty parts uh the, the, they are all purple and then any kind of under uh, under cloth like the skirt here that is that is the dark red and uh, then Neferata obviously is 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 in gold uh, with a brighter red uh, brighter red armor uh, but still with a purple and she kind of ties in and um, we've got um, some we're going to have some green glowy eyes on all the skeletons and then she's going to have a green glowy staff as well which will be quite cool just to kind of tie everything together now the bit that is um <laughs> yeah the bit that is taking an awful lot of time at the moment 
is this guy. So there's five there's five in the unit. There's four skeletons. Uh, the, the the this guy who is absolutely amazing. He's a stunning, stunning, stunning sculpt, especially with the long sword. I think the long sword looks so much better on him. Um, so uh, yeah, he's really really cool. This guy is going to have a banner. Uh, so this is the banner from. I believe it's the Craven King from uh, Nighthaunt, so I think it's his banner. Uh, I forget, I forget, like exactly where I got the banner from. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> this is the banner, and what I was trying to do, I'm going to try. There's a, there's an old piece of Neferata artwork, which I'm trying to freehand on the banner. Now I've done it once, uh, and you can see it's not there. Uh, because I did it very small and I needed to blow it up a little bit so I did it quite small and we had like her eyes here and her mouth and her chin and then we were coming down to her shoulders and, and her cleavage and, and chest was here and her hair was coming out so I need to really blow it up and get her a little bit a little bit a little bit larger on the banner so like her shoulders come here and her eyes are much bigger so that you can actually do some painting on it uh, so this is this is the bit that's taking taking the time up at the moment and I really really need to crack on and get this done um, because this is funnily enough this is probably the one which is furthest away although they look I mean Neferata is pretty close to being finished uh, she needs a little bit of work on there uh, I've got a little bit of a, a silver uh, drip on that uh, it's coming off from messing around with my paintbrush too much but these are all really nice and they're going to be tied together again with the with the yellow glow in the eyes so this guy has the yellow glow which is coming out really well so he's got the yellow glow in his eyes and uh, he's got his copper brass um coppery brass crown again so any kind of metallics uh, me metal armor and trim and everything on the skeletons is going to be in this brass in this uh, copper trim same as the same as the shield trim there so these are, they should look really nice when they're all finished. They're going to be on a quite a simple plinth, I think, when they're done. Um, I've got some bases from the, I can't remember what these guys are called. Uh, but anyway, they were an Underworlds warband uh, when the new box came out. So I've got all the, all the bases from that warband. So they're all going to be on those bases, uh, including these extra guys as well. This is Captain Hagrim, I think it is, from Curse City. And then this is just a basic skeleton uh, with a spear. I thought I thought the spear, just to add a little bit of difference uh, across the unit, a little bit of interest across the unit. So you've got two of the long swords. This guy also has a long sword as well, but because he's got his long sword down, I've cracked it off. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not a big fan of the long sword I picked. I wished I'd picked a different one. Uh, that one would have been perfect if this one was like cracked here and then put on it. Um, but I I, I, I I pondered that. I wondered about putting that sword on here, but uh, I just thought it would be too similar to the one that's already on the uh, on the king. So I, I went with this one and then regretted it. I think it should have just been a simple one because I don't like the... I think these details end up looking a little bit too busy. I might, hopefully, hopefully I'll change my mind once that's got some non-metallic on it and looking kind of all, all rusty and cool. Um, but uh, we'll see. I need to get cracking on these though. So uh, over the next couple of weeks, I think I'll probably put uh, I'll probably put a lot of effort into these to try and get uh, these closer to being finished. Uh, like I say, we have got seven weeks, but seven weeks does go very very quickly. Um, now, from my very excited serious entry, <laughs> which is these guys, uh, which I need to kind of crack on. Uh, I <laughs> I also have. I also have a hilarious entry, which um, I started painting because I really like the model and I had the idea. Um, I think I saw a while ago when the little Nurgling came out, somebody put the Nurgling on a massive pile of skulls and had him as uh, uh, had him as the army's demon prince. And uh, when uh, when the Warhammer Plus, uh, Warhammer TV Plus, oops, the, uh, the, the exclusive miniatures came out and this is one of the familiars from that, uh, from that unit. Uh, where is she? There she is. So she's one of he's one of her familiars, uh, and she, she's amazing as well. I'll have to paint her up at some point, and uh, yeah. So I, I wanted to put him on a pile of skulls. Now, annoyingly, I I got a bit carried away and excited, and I was like, oh, it looks really cool. I'll I'll, I'll stick him on. Now, what I should have do is should have done is just made the pile of skulls one skull higher. 
because I think it would have just worked a little bit better. But anyway, it is what it is. It looks cool. I do like it. Um, painting skulls for ever and ever and ever is quite fun. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, but uh, yeah, I think what I'm going to do with this guy, he's just going to get refined a little bit more. He's got his, uh, he's got his coppery brass armor uh, and a nice non-metallic uh, sword on here as well. And uh, we'll finish, we'll finish kind of tidying him up. And he's just going to go on a very, very simple plinth. Uh, not very high, and then I'm going to do a very very simple resin pour up here as well, just to just to uh, cover like the like one and a half skulls. I'm just going to have it up to about here, just just because I think I, I, I don't really know. There's no real reason for it. This is a uh, very much more a kind of a display piece than uh, a competition piece. I think it's just <laughs> I think it just it, he deserves to be in Golden Demon. I think is the best way of saying this. So he's just going to have a little bit of a resin pour up here on a nice simple plinth. We'll finish all this off, um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> he's just going to get entered in and see if he can see if he can earn himself a pin. I think that would be great if he could get himself a pin. Uh, right now, the last entry is uh, it's actually a, it's a last minute thing, and some of you will have seen this uh, on my YouTube already. Uh, these are the mech suits which I did. Uh, the Imperial Guard Mexus. This is, uh, for those of you who know, this is Sergeant Hudson. And then we also have Trevor here as well. There's Trev. Um, and then uh, I can't remember who this one got called. Uh, I can't remember what this guy's name was uh, when we when we uh, ended up naming everything. But yeah, so these are the mech suits which I did. And because they're, they're, they're actually quite quick to paint because it's all, it's all just weathering. Um, and I've got to be a little bit careful with that for entering into Golden Demon. You don't want it to just be weathering. You've got to have some kind of refinement on there as well. Um, but the, they are they are coming together quite well. And I threw some paint on this. This literally took me like two hours, I think, just to get it up to this kind of standard. Uh, and obviously, then we we have to uh, uh, pick out the pick out the pilot and do some highlights and things uh, and uh, and weather and chip the. If you look at the the difference on the shoulder pads there this one's all chipped out uh, and this one it still needs its chipping doing uh, and then i got a uh, a flare for the for the bolter as well so we might do a little bit of osl onto uh, onto the that side of the fist uh, but these will be like if i get time these will be a uh, well actually there's there's two things either if i get time or when we get like two weeks out, might maybe ten days out, uh, and these guys are just like not close to being done, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get them finished, then I might swap my focus onto these, uh, and uh, and get a a nice unit of three, <laughs> three mech suits, uh, which would be brilliant. He's he's obviously going to have a green green light there because we've got a red light over here, we've got a blue light over here, so he's going to have a um, a a green light, uh, just to finish them off. Um, yeah, I think these are one of the most enjoyable things I think I've done for a long time. Sorry, excuse me, hiccups. So uh, yeah, there we go. So that's the that's where we are with Golden Demon. Uh, I've got I, I do have a fair bit to do on them, but we do have some time, uh, and then. Um, <laughs> this is going to make everybody on my Twitch stream very very happy. Uh, I also have. <sighs> I really, really, really don't like ultramarines. Um, I find them very dull, very boring, and um, my Twitch stream um, have forced me <laughs> to paint an ultramarine. Uh, now, I did say that um, if I got time, I would, I would just kind of like refine him and finish him up, and then enter him into Golden Demon just to see if he could win a pin uh, for the Twitch stream. Uh, but uh, you will notice that he has he has a gene seal cult head. That was just me being funny, and uh, actually I quite like it, so he might stay. So you might see uh, Marnius gene sealer Calgar uh, at Gold Demon as well. If you do, please take a photo of him uh, and share the shit out of him all over social media because I think that would be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, lots of fun. Please let me know what your favourite one of all of these entries is. Um, whether you think there are. Uh, any little any little bits that uh, I need to do on them. One of the things that one of the little bits of kind of advice that I always say is uh, well, uh, going back to Glorfindel when we were zooming in and just having a look and being really critical. 
uh, and just take a photograph and zoom in and see what your work is actually like because if you are painting for a competition unless it's absolutely and you can unless you can guarantee that it's at your best quality a month out from the competition then you keep painting it like there's there, there is no excuse for me uh, and to, well uh, there is because I've got other ones to to paint but there's no real excuse I keep going back to this uh, and I've worked on this tabard like over three separate days kind of refining it and just looking at it and going no I didn't get I, I, I haven't quite got this uh, the four crosses in there I didn't get that quite right so I went back in and t tidied that up I tidied this back up again um, I tidied all the blue up down here again so just being really critical and looking at it and going well I didn't quite get that brush mark in quite the right place so let's let's go in and see if I can improve it um, and uh, something that a friend told me uh, you've already done it so you can do it again it's not a problem sort of thing like if you've if you've already done this little bit of highlight here you can do it again if you've just made a little bit of a mistake so uh, yeah just keep picking things up painting for competitions i really think is is, is important um and not even not even to try and go there and win it just to it's a completely different painting process to painting for yourself or painting uh, an army or anything like that you're painting and you are you're trying to represent yourself the best you can right so you you get a model to this kind of point and you go okay let's have an actual look on here and um the, this highlight here on the uh, on the scabbard uh, is a little bit chunky so i'm going to go in there and i'm going to sort that out uh, and have a look out and then take photograph take a photograph from this angle this angle and this angle and just zoom in and be really be really blunt with yourself and really honest with yourself and say well actually maybe this bit could be better uh, maybe this bit here isn't quite as um it, it's not quite reading as as, as non-metallic chain mail so i think that that big chunky highlight there probably needs to be broken up a little bit uh, i think the chains need to be a little bit more definition up in there so i'll go in there and i'll just kind of drop in some shadows and, and tidy all that up um the glorfin that i did last year uh, i think each eye or one of the eyes i did I did manage to do in four attempts the other eye took about 10 10 goes um but because i've done that uh both of those two uh, i think i did one in the, one in one attempt and there's uh, the the uh this left eye over here took me two attempts so i mean i've already kind of improved uh on on that uh, from last year and it's a really nice little journey and you can feel really proud of yourself when you do things like this so i think painting for competitions it's a it is a really good um, it's a really good process to go through if you are interested in improving your painting uh, and I know there are plenty of people out there who aren't there are plenty of people out there who are just like nope I want to get this kill team painted and I want to go and play 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 with it next week and I'm gonna love it it's gonna be brilliant so yeah it's completely different uh, painting styles and complete uh, and painting journeys that we're all on and uh, if you are um, wanting to improve in any kind of painting I think painting competitions are really really uh, important and interesting to do um, so yeah I would urge everybody to go and have a go so yeah right that is that video all done I'm going to head off now and go make myself a cup of tea so thank you very much for tuning in please 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 drop me a uh, a like and a comment down below uh, let me know what you're painting if you're going to Golden Demon either Adepticon or Warhammer Fest. Uh, which of my entries is your favourite? Uh, let me know which one you are looking forward to seeing if you're going to Warhammer Fest. And uh, you can catch me on Twitter uh, and Instagram, both at Chris Frossin, and then I'm streaming regularly on Twitch as well, so you can find me on uh, Twitch uh, at Chris Frossin as well. Uh, I have a Patreon, and uh, we'll see you on the next video, which may or may not include something to do with tin kings uh, <laughs> seriously the that, that reveal came out today i was losing my mind right thank you very much everybody take care good luck if you are painting for golden demon i look forward to seeing you there and uh yeah i'm uh, I, I can't wait to get this one finished because this is already looking better than the glorfindle i painted last year right thanks very much everybody take care and i'll see you all later